Hi, everyone. Having some technical difficulties in the brain fart today, but welcome. I'm Tarlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and we're going to be editing subscriber submitted images today. If you were here last week, we tried to come online and we had some internet problems. So if you stuck around and waited for us, thank you for your patience. We are here today and we're going to be doing edits of water images today. If you'd like to participate in next week's or the following week's edits by submitting an image or two, we're going to be doing themes. So next week, we're looking for night photography images. So something taken at blue hour or at night. And, or in the dark, okay, so something dark. And the following week, we're going to be doing portraits. So we're looking specifically for people portraits. If you have pets, we'll save those for another time. So night photography and people is what we're looking for next. Let me hop over to my Lightroom and I'm going to grab the images and we'll get started. Okay, as I said, we were having some technical difficulties last week, but we've got some really great images of different kinds of water and different forms of water, including ice and so on. So this is the one that we had put on our fancy little featured image for the week, and this was by Zay. So this is one of the fabulous images I'm going to work on. Let me just run through and see who's here. Sheila missed us last week. Good to see you, Sheila. We missed you. We miss you too. <laughs> uh, Dave, I noticed that you also purchased the Luminar course, Dave. So awesome. Good job on that. Warm and uh, warming and sunny in Calgary, kind of. Yeah, it's sunny here too, but still lots of snow. Definitely warmer where you are, Trish. Good to see you. We've got all the regulars. Holly, good day, Holly. Good afternoon. And Deb, I wonder if it's warmer in Alaska or Alberta. All right. Nigel, good to see you, Nigel. Awesome. Zay, that is your image. Look at that. All right. So let me get started on some water images. So like I said, we're doing categories or themes now to our editing because what I've kind of discovered is that uh, we can easily apply the edits from one person's image to another if the images are of similar subject matter. All right, so let me just grab an image. I've already edited this one. So I'm going to show you how what I've done with this one using one of her other images. Uh, so let's see. Zaya sent quite a few images of, uh, it looks like icebergs or something. Where did you photograph these, Zaya? I'd love to know more about these because it's really fantastic. Okay, this one's got a really cool reflection. It uh, looks like just a different kind of shot. One is underexposed. Okay, so it looks like she's bracketed these. If you, and tell me about that. So if you've bracketed these in order to do HDR, can you see that you might have an issue with the moving um, things in the water here, the ice chunks, but you really don't need bracketing on this scene. And I think I want to start with this one because of, of that. Right. And then I'm going to apply the edits from one to the other. Right. So when we look at get ready to start sharing some links, Rob, because I'm going to have a few about this. So when we look at an image to see whether or not we need to do HDR and you can um, think about it in terms of if you have a high contrast scene. OK, that's when you want to bracket. So what you want to do is take a shot and then look at it on the back of your camera, make sure you're looking at um, the histogram, right? So the article I'm talking about, Rob, is to HDR or not. That's the one I'm going to want you to grab. So what I'm looking for here is that there's nothing clipping. So if I look at this brightest image here and I turn on the clipping warnings, which I've done, right? There's no highlights clipping and there's no shadows clipping. So you don't really need to bracket here because there's not a loss of detail. That's when you would need to bracket when you're losing something on one end or the other. Um, let me just see, for example, let's see if this one, okay, so that one's clipping a tiny bit. 
right? So something like this, where you've got a dark foreground and then the sun or something really bright. So you need to have a high range of contrast. And I don't see one in this particular image set that would need HDR. Okay, so I'm going to work on the brightest image because the others are a little bit too dark. See, there's a gap starting here. Okay, so this is the best exposure. And I'm going to start with this one. So the first thing I did was I changed the profile to something camera matching, right? So you can get to that here. In the landscape profile, if you just hover over, landscape usually adds blue and green to your image to pick up sky and um, foliage, right? Because it figures out that landscapes have those colors in them, right? So if you want to see what each are doing, just hover your mouse over, right? Obviously, we don't want a black and white. Might be interesting, but... I think I'm going to go with the landscape one. It adds a lot of blue to the image, which is good in this case, right? The next thing I want to do is crop it a little bit. So when I open the crop tool, because for me, it, it feels like it's crooked, right? So I can try auto, okay? See how it did straighten it a little bit? So it thinks that it's it's straighter this way. The um the next article I'm going to want you to share, Rob, did you already grab the link for that one? Did you share the link for the HDR or not? Um, the next one I want you to grab is the one that I just did last week or the week before on visual math. And that has to do with composition and composing your images, okay? Because this one has one third of sky. And then there's a lot of space down here as well. So I'm going to get rid of some of the sky and I'm going to go off the normal aspect ratio and go more panoramic on this one. And then I'm going to decide, okay, do I want these rocks at the bottom or not? So let's have a look at it with the rocks included. Okay, this one here sort of bothers me because it's just a tiny little bit. I wish there was actually more rocks at the bottom to balance the bottom. But since there's not a lot, I might decide to crop them out. Okay. So I'm going to leave them for now, but I might come back and crop it even narrower and go something like, like this, okay? Just to really simplify and make it a panorama. Okay, so I'm going to leave it for the moment, but we're going to come back to that, okay? Then I'm going to do my shift double click trick on the white slider. So I'm on the word white, holding down shift and double clicking it. Now notice the whites went down, so I'm just going to double check that it looks like it thinks there's something clipping, but it, I don't see anything clipping. So I'm going to just increase it, right? And I'm holding down the Alt Option key while I'm while I'm holding the sliders, and that will show the clippings, okay? The clipping warnings. So just by doing the camera profile, okay, there's the before and after. So camera profile and two sliders, we've punched up the color a whole great deal, okay? Now I want to bring some of this detail back up here. Okay, so you can see this huge spike in this area. Okay, that's the highlight area. So I'm going to pull the highlight down. Okay, like so. And look what it does to the sky. Okay, so we've got this beautiful, what's called Alpen Glow. Let me close this so we have a bigger image. This is called Alpen Glow, where you get the sun on the top of the mountains, and then the rest is very blue, okay? So there's lots of pink and orange up here. So let's see if we can enhance that. I played with this image a little bit, and I, I kind of decided, okay, do I want to make it all blue, which we could do, okay, and actually get rid of the orange? I'll show you both, okay? Or we can enhance it. Now, I want to do a little bit of clarity, but I don't want to go too far, because what happens is it picks up uh, clarity in the water and the sky, and I want to keep those smooth. So I'm just going to go a little bit of clarity, and we'll come back to that, right? If I go down to the HSL panel and luminance, grab the targeted adjustment tool, that's this guy, and then I'm just going to go over top the mountains here because I want to grab this orange or pink color, and I don't know what colors are in it, and then just take it down, okay? Now notice if I do that, it's red and orange. Obviously, you don't want to do something like that. That's too far. Okay, I want to just bring it down a tiny bit. But I'm starting to get this weird sort of color on the horizon. So I'm not crazy about that color. I like it on the mountaintop, but I, for some reason, it bothers me in the sky. It just seems like it's 
um, an odd color. So we can come back up here and adjust the white balance as well. I'm actually going to try daylight okay? because the whole image is really, really warm. Um, let's go a little bit warmer than daylight. And that sort of solves a lot of the issues in the sky there. So we still got this like nice pink color on the top, right? If we want more detail in here, now notice by shifting the color, watch what happens to the histogram. I'm going to go back to as shot. Look at this, okay? So there's a spike here in the reds, but by bringing this color down, look what happens to the histogram. We kind of brought all that in line, okay? So think about all different aspects of editing to bring down um, highlights and things like this, not just the color. I'm going to spike it up a little bit more. So look at how much more balanced our histogram is now. Okay, if I want to bring the shadows up or lighten the water, I can do that with the shadow slider easily. Okay. But see, I haven't touched the exposure slider Okay, because your exposure was bang on here. Okay. You just need to do a little bit of adjusting. Next, I'm going to go into the local masking and I'm going to select the sky. And this is where I want to adjust the color again. Now, notice it's picking up the mountain as well. So I'm going to just darken it because I, oh, no, it's not picking up the mountain. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's do, I want to darken it, but I want to add some blue. And I might add some pink. Okay, so instead of red, I'm going to go with magenta and a little bit more blue. Now, if this thing is in the road, you can just move it. Okay, this is your mask tool. Mask overlay. Okay, so I'm going to name this one Sky. It's helpful to rename your masks because if you want to go and uh, copy and paste from your settings from one to the other, when you have the masks named, you'll know if you want that mask or not for the next image. Okay. I still feel like there's a lot of pink there. So we can even try shifting the color this way. Let's do a fine, fine adjustment instead. Okay, so we can shift the whole sky color if we want, one way or the other. That's a little more blue. That's a little more purple overall, right? So we can go either way. I'm still not liking that. Or I could go a completely different way and dial the saturation down because I want to get rid of this sort of red glow on the horizon and then add a color back here. Okay, so I'm literally going to pick the blue that I want. Okay, and there's a little trick here. You can actually grab a color from the image, right? So if I wanna grab, you know, this blue to match it, what you have to do is hold down your, I'm holding down the command key. So I'm clicking here to get the eyedropper and then see as I move my mouse around, right? It's kind of going to those colors, right? So I can literally just drop it anywhere and it will match that color. Let's try something there, right? So I was holding the command key the whole time, okay? If I want a little bit more saturation, and yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more to this color, okay? So see how that sky change, okay? It makes a big difference, I'm going to bring the highlights down a bit more on the sky. And it looks kind of uneven to me in the middle here. So I'm going to fix that in a different way. Okay. But see what that's doing. Okay. So we had the sky there. And it definitely is adjusting the top of the mountain. So I'm going to see if I can subtract subject. Let's see if it recognizes the mountain as a subject. No, it did not still picking up the mountain. So let's see if I can subtract and I'm going to do luminance range. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And I just want to get the brightest areas here. Okay. Let me see what it's picking up for luminance range. Oops. That's the wrong one. Let me do, I just want the brightest areas. So see how that's picking up the mountain. Still not what I want. So I'm trying to deselect the mountain so that it's not changing the color of the mountain. 
So let's try object. Okay, so object is the one where it starts to find the edges of things. So if I paint over the horizon and the mountain like this, hopefully it will find it because it looks for the edges of the objects. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That's better. Okay, you see what that did? And I missed a little bit of it up there. So I'm going to do subtract and then just use the brush with auto mask. So I'm trying to make sure that I do not have the snow and the mountain selected. Okay, so it's finding the edge there. Where's the edge of the sky? There we go. Right there. See how it finds the edge nicely? And I can't tell if the mountain over here is being affected, but let's just a little bit. See that? When I go over the black area, it's removing it from there. Okay, so now let's see what it's doing. I'm turning on this overlay with the O key, by the way. Okay, so let's see what this sky is doing. So it's shifting the sky blue. Okay, so we still have this orange and pink on the mountain, but we've shifted the sky more blue. I might do it a little bit less saturated. Like so. That looks better. Okay, so that looks more realistic. So I'm just trying to match the blues and make sure that that orange on the mountain is the only orange, not in the sky. Okay. Now let's do another one and see what it thinks is the subject. So I'm going to do select subject. Okay, and it's picked up these icebergs, which is what I was kind of hoping, but I want a few more of them. So I'm going to do add object again, and I'm going to paint over basically all the ice flows here because I want to add texture. I get the mountains. Might have to do another pass. Okay, so it picked up most of them. And I'll go with a brush and auto mask. So I'm getting these guys in here and over here. Okay, so I'm going to be adding texture and I don't want to add texture to the sky. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm not selecting the sky, just the mountains and the snow. Okay. Notice it's picked up the reflections as well. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, now that I've got it selected, I'm going to increase texture. And if I zoom in a little bit here, okay, you can see what it's doing. See what clarity does. See what texture does. It really brings out, if I come in even farther, can you see what texture is doing? It's picking up the details in that ice. Okay. I might brighten them a little bit. And also, let's see if we lift the shadows a little bit. Okay, so see what that's doing. I'm going to call this ice. Turn it off and on. And it's maybe a little too bright now. That's looking pretty good. It's also kind of teal, right? The color is different. So if I want to shift the color, I can do the same, right? I can give it either more warmth or more blue or use the color option down here. Okay? Closing that. So now let's look at the before and after. Okay? So we've picked up detail in the sky, corrected for the most part this color or light adjustment in the sky and picked up the icebergs. So I'm gonna make the whole thing a little bit brighter. Make sure I don't have any clipping. Nope, oh, that's good. And now how do we feel about the rocks at the bottom? Let me take a vote here, right? Do we keep the rocks, vote yes rocks, or crop them out? What do you think? I'm gonna check some comments while we're doing that. Visual mass, good article. Never thought of that before. Woo! Just won't spill my coffee. Um, yeah, it's a great. It's 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 from the art world, Kelly. Right, and if you dig further into it, um, there's a lot to it. And this here, like the water, has lots of visual mass, right? Because there's so much of it. And the same thing with the sky, which is why I cropped it out. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. So Kelly says crop it. David says crop it. Well, everybody says crop them out. And oh, Holly has an interesting crop it out unless you can clone in more. Tricky because there's not very many there, but good idea. I like the way I like the way you're thinking, Holly. I like the way you're thinking. Karen says crop them out unless they are lighted slightly. Well, we could do that too. Um, if you wanted to duplicate the rocks, that would be easier to do in Photoshop. Um, and that might be something that Zay could do. If you have another image, Zay, um, you might be able to take this and um, take another image if it has rocks and combine them, right? You'd have to do that in Photoshop, right? A little bit more um, advanced editing. I think we're going to go with the majority and crop them. So I'm actually going to go there. So I want to have a little bit more space. Well, let's get, take them right out. Let's see how that looks. See, now we have a beautiful panorama. The only thing with leaving a little bit in the bottom, again, the visual mass thing, it feels heavier on this side of the image. Okay, so if I leave just a little bit, like one rock, it almost kind of balances it. Does that make sense? Now it just looks weird with one rock. So maybe I was right to leave them. And let's just do what somebody who said to lighten them, Karen. Let's see if we can lighten them. All right. So I can lighten the rocks. Let's go back to putting them back in. So I can use select object again. I really like this new select object. I don't know if it's going to find them very well here because it's looking for edges of things. Okay, so it did not too bad. Right? I could go in and, and brush the rest of this in, right, just with the with the brush real quick. Okay, so again, I've got the brush on finding edges. And then once I've got them selected, I can brighten them a little bit. And the way that I would do that is actually bringing up the white. See how that makes a difference? So as opposed to exposure, I'd bring up the white and the shadows and the exposure, and then bring the blacks back down just to keep some contrast, okay? Somewhere in there. So see what that's doing, is brightening those rocks. And it definitely gives them more balance with the rest of the image because they were so black before. And I kind of like them there now, right? I don't like this one though. So I think I'm just gonna clone this one out. So I'm going to go paint over it completely. And I'm using this new content aware fill. Okay. So it finds, it finds something nearby to fill it with. And there's a little bit of the rock left. So I'm just going to hit refresh. Sometimes if you hit refresh a few times, it, it finds something good. If it doesn't, you can just press on the command key and literally draw a box around the area that you'd like to use it to clone from. Okay. It's still not getting rid of that one. So let's try this one instead, which is the healing brush. Okay. Now if I kind of match it, there we go. Okay. See, that's better. I try all three tools to see which one works the best. And the little trick is if you move your mouse, oops, now I've moved it too far. If you move your mouse over here, the, oh, my Lightroom's slowing down. The tool sort of disappears or hides. If that's not happening for you, turn on your toolbar at the bottom down here, okay? So T for toolbar and make sure it's set to auto, okay? tool overlay because if you have it set to always they won't disappear like that okay so set that to auto i'm still not getting a good removal of that rock there the clone tool actually did the best right okay? so closing that up and i might add a further just a quick little darkening of the sky because it's it's brighter in the middle for some reason so I'm going to do a linear gradient just over that area. If you want to get your gradient straight, you see how I was kind of messing about with it? Let me undo that and just remove it, and I'll show you how to get it straight. So if we choose linear gradient and you just hold the shift key down while you're dragging, see I can't 
make it crooked now. It stays straight with the edge that I bring it out from. Okay. Oops. All right. So now I'm just going to bring the highlights down, which should affect the middle. Yeah, it's still getting the corners. Isn't that odd? I'm trying to even out the tones here. Okay, so I'm just going to subtract luminance range over here. That's kind of closer to what I'm looking for. There, can you see what that's doing? It's just evening out that middle part of the sky. Okay. Very subtle. Center sky. Okay. Now, if we want to apply all these edits, I haven't done an edge vignette. We could do that as well. But if we want to apply all these edits, um, I would also make sure to go in here and apply, which I did already, it looks like, um, your chromatic aberration and lens corrections, because that will do things like make sure that the corners aren't darkened. Okay, see how that corner is dark there? Okay. Fixing that issue, right? Now I can copy, so Command C. And see now the the masks are named. I know which ones to um, copy. Okay, so if I want the sky and the ice only, and then I can copy it onto this one. So this is the darker image. Taking a moment to load. My Lightroom is slow today. Apparently, it needs coffee as well. Hmm. Sheila says it could be a reflection from the snow in the sky. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I'm not sure that it copied correctly. No, it didn't. Okay, so let's try. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to copy everything, including the crop. I'm going to copy all the masks and then paste it to the darker one. Okay, there we go. Okay. So now when you paste in Lightroom, since version 12.1, uh, or version, yeah, 12.1 or whatever it is. Um, now when you paste, it will take the automatic edits that you've done, such as select objects, select sky, and so on, and use AI to automatically find them in the new image. You used to have to go back and select them, okay? Now, um, you can see the sky selection wasn't perfect in the first one, but it blended better. And I still think that the first one is your best exposure, right? You can actually darken this one a bit more if you want it richer color, right? So I would work on editing the brightest one. Now this one, I'm just going to show you what I did because I used all the same techniques on this one to edit it. So the original looks like this, right? It's almost kind of monochromatic, but there is color there. You'll notice that I changed it to camera landscape, okay? And let's see if I did any color editing. No, I didn't. Oh, I edited the color a little bit to adjust the hue, okay? So see how I made it more sort of teal blue, right? And I did this by adjusting these sliders here, this blue, okay? See the difference there? So I was trying for a more... Um, homogeneous color tone, right? So I wanted the sky blue and the, the iceberg blue to be a little bit more similar, okay? I darkened that. We could brighten the shot shadows up a little bit. And then taking a look at the masks that I did, right? Same thing. So I did the sky to darken and add blue, okay? So you can see that I've dialed the yellow down, right? And I actually increased the clarity, okay? because I wanted the clouds to punch up a little bit more okay. and lowered the saturation. Okay. So I wanted the blue of the sky, not quite as intense. So I lowered the saturation. Okay. So that's what it was at. And I dialed it down a little bit. Okay. In hindsight, I might just darken the sky a little bit more for a little bit more drama. There we go. That looks good. Okay, now this one I did not name, so let's go back and do that. So I've selected the ice here. Okay, so I'm going to call this one ice. 
And notice it wasn't picking up this water, not so much. So I could go back and add this one as well. But look at how many times I had to do subject and then I selected different objects and eventually I went to a brush to, to brush it in. Because right? I still feel like this it's missing this one right here and this one. Okay, so I want to get all the ice bits. Okay? Like that. And when you have this auto mask turned on, it finds the edges of things. Okay? Okay? And then on the bottom of the image, I lowered the exposure and the highlights. Okay? Now what that one is doing, let me move this up here. I'm going to rename that one bottom. And all that's doing is just darkening those bottom ice chunks so that your eye comes up to the middle ones more. Okay. And I don't think I cropped this one at all. Okay. So I could bring this one down maybe a little bit so it fades. And I've got quite a large fade here so that it's darker at the bottom than it is up here. Right? So the only crop I did was to straighten it again. Right? And the crop tool does a pretty good job on auto. Okay? So if we try auto, see, that's all I used. That's it. Okay? Now I can go to the next image, which is a similar one. Oh, no, it's the same image. <laughs> Pardon me. I made a copy of it. Okay, So that's the original, and that's where I ended up. Okay, so I went with a really blue, um, teal blue color of these icebergs. You might go a completely different direction. Okay. And let's see. Uh, Trish says, have the problems with the exports in the last update been fixed? Yes, uh, almost immediately. It was about two days after I updated that they solved that, and it updated to um, whatever version I'm running now. Okay, so if I go here, 12.0.1. So 12.0 was the one that had the issues, and 12.0.1 came out about two or three days later. Okay. So, yes, it was fixed. Um, one thing I want to mention um, is that we have some keyboard shortcuts. I'm using a lot of Lightroom keyboard shortcuts. So if you don't have a copy of this, if you don't have my Lightroom class and you want a copy of the Lightroom keyboard shortcuts, Rob, can you put a link to that, please? Okay. Kelly said, thought about a 9 by 16 crop, maybe black and white. I would definitely play with the black and white, Kelly, on that first image, the panorama one. Um, but I, I just, I like the blue so much of of the, the tonality because it feels cold, right? Like keeping it blue feels cold, right? If we make a virtual copy and we try black and white, right? Oh, <laughs> see, you look what happens. When we add blue to the sky... With this thing here, you have to turn that off, okay? So if you've added any color using this box specifically, okay, it will show up as a color even if you change it to black and white, okay? So make sure you just turn that off. It actually is pretty dramatic as black and white. Um, I might even go more dramatic and just add a further bit of contrast like so. And I might go more dramatic on the sky as well. But yeah, it makes a really cool black and white. Absolutely. And if you want to do a toning of it to keep sort of that blue feeling, use the color grading and use the shadows. Okay. And when you click on just shadows, as opposed to seeing this, you get some sliders to work with. Okay. So you can adjust the hue which is basically moving this around the circle. Okay, so I want to get something that's blue and then just increase the saturation a little bit. So see how it's adding saturation into the shadows, adding blue into the shadows. Okay, And then I might go white. Let's just see what happens if we do yellow. So then we have what's called a duotone. Okay, so you could definitely play with this kind of idea. Okay. Maybe even something like, ooh, that's kind of cool. So now we have sort of the pink sky 
and the blue water. So totally different, totally different. Let's take a look at the two side by side. Okay, time for a vote. Who likes the color one on the left? And who likes the black and white toned one, right? Well, tell me, does the reflection, do the reflections pop now, Kelly? I could definitely even brighten them up a little bit more, right? Going for the drama here. I like really dramatic black and white. I posted some on my Facebook and I shared them in our Facebook group, but I'll, I'll see if I can pull them up for you guys. I did some really dramatic portraits two weeks ago. We had a hall rented. Um, I was part of a workshop that we were giving for some young Indigenous uh, people doing a model workshop, and I did the headshots. So we had set up a background, lights, like studio strobes, everything. And then I had some of my own models come in um, in the evening, and we did some really cool stuff. Uh, looks like color seems to be the consensus, okay? And Zay says she likes color, and it's her image, so she gets to choose. Um, Raymond says he likes both. Yeah, I do too, right? They're very different for different reasons, right? But I like this kind of pink and blue tone that was achieved here, okay? Let's take a look at some similar images with a different kind of water, okay? Uh, let's do something in Luminar. So I've got a few folks that, let's see, is Brandon here? Nigel's here. Let's do Nigel's, okay? So this is Nigel's image. And I have to say, Nigel, over the time that you've been attending here, I see I see a vast improvement in your images. So well done. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Okay. Right? Now he's using Luminar. So I'm going to take this one directly from Lightroom into Luminar as a, a raw file. Okay. So I'm going to choose, where are we here? Export. So instead of edit in, I'm going to choose export. And I'm going to open the source file. So what that means is it's not going to take any Lightroom edits, which I haven't done. It's just going to open the raw file directly in Luminar. Okay. Kelly says she likes the black and white. Been on a black and white thing lately. <laughs> I, I totally know how that goes. Yeah, I totally know how that goes. Uh, Rob says we did some really cool stuff that night. I will show, I will show you guys. And, uh, we also did some Aurora skies that came out this week. I'll show you that as well. And as Rob has pointed out, we had a new video published on our YouTube channel today. So if you haven't watched that one already, Luminar Neo update 1.5.1 came out the other day. So I did a little video on it and I talked about the pricing for the new extensions. Um, apparently they are available now individually at least i saw them the other day individually and um now i can't seem to find it again i think you have to be logged into your account right because when i go to the page and i'm not logged in it asks me to buy luminar right but this is what i see if i go there right and you can see that i'm logged in if i go back here okay so you can see that i'm logged in because my image is there so if I go to buy now, you can see that you can actually buy the extensions separately now. And it gives me prices in, can in Canadian because I'm, I'm Canadian. All right. So Nigel's image. Uh, we could look at a preset. It's recommending Filmatic or Blockbuster or Waterscapes. Let's try the Waterscapes. So we can start with a preset. If you're going to apply a preset, remember you need to do it first because it overrides everything else. Okay. That's really blue. <laughs> well, that's kind of neat. So that took, changes the look of the image completely, right? So the others were blue. This one brings out more of the magenta. I kind of like that one so far. Let's go with this one, unless we can find a better one. Uh, I'm gonna try, let's try sunsets. Let's see what we got in here. Toscana, I'm not gonna use, because I know that one changes the sky into something really pink, and I don't necessarily wanna do that. Let's try impact. No, none of these are working. Well, this really brightens it up. We could probably work with that as well, right? It's really brightening things up. That's not bad. Let's go with this one 
and then just work with editing it. Okay, so once you've chosen the preset that kind of goes in the direction that you want, then you have the option of going back here and tweaking them because all the edits are here. Okay, so if we go into develop, we can see that it actually lowered the contrast. Let's see if it did anything else. Uh, pushed up the um, exposure. Okay, so if we see what this develop is doing, it's brightening that, which has actually done a really good job. Okay, so when you bring this curve up, that's brightening. Okay, Rob, if you could please show the video on curves, that would be great. I'm going to make sure that I have chromatic aberration and distortion checked off in auto fringe because I did see what I thought might be some chromatic aberration around the mass of this boat here. Okay, so if I turn these off, let's see if you can see it. Eh, there's a little bit of a red fringe there. Okay, so I'm just going to turn these off, both of them. I'm looking for a little fringe of color on either side, and it's kind of like a little red fringe there. That actually works better with that off, okay? I want to make sure that it's straight as well, right? And I'm going to do that with the crop tool. And do we need any noise reduction? Well, it doesn't look too bad. We could add a little bit of noise reduction here if we want, but it doesn't look too noisy. Okay. The only drawback of doing this this way is I can't see the histogram at the top, but you can hit the J key to see if you've got any clipping. Okay. So I could bring the highlights down a little bit more. We can work on the sky separately and we'll see what happens with the other adjustments. Okay. And let's see if I want to, I'm not sure I want to lower the contrast that much. Let's keep get a little bit more contrast back. We can also work on the color here. Okay, so it's it's as shot. If we want warmer and we want more sunset, we can increase and get more of those colors here. Right? Let's see the next one. So the next one it applied is structure. Okay, so it's applied quite a heavy boost of structure. And I'm not sure that I want that applying everywhere. I might like the water to be a little bit less structured so that your eye goes to the boats, okay? So do you remember your eye goes to um, four things in the image, right? So those are where your eye goes. So if the sharpness is part of the foreground or the background, it'll actually take away from the subject, okay? So I wanna take this structure off of the water. So I'm going to use mask AI because there's a water um, as one of the elements in the mask AI. So let's see if it finds the water and then I can just minus it. Okay, so I'll select the water. Uh, yes, there's water. So let's see if it picks it. Cross our fingers. It did. Okay, so now I'm just going to select it and then go down here. Okay, we can still see the water selected, and then I'm going to invert it. So it's basically now applying to everything else. So when we look at this, okay, see how it's crunching up the boats and the sky, but it's leaving the water alone, okay? And that's what I prefer. Now, if we want to take it a step farther, okay, we can actually copy this mask and apply it some some other places, right? Because what's next is enhance, right? So it's enhancing the sky and it's punching up again, everything. I'm gonna dial this one back a little bit because I want it a little bit more contrasty, right? And the sky enhancer is doing a good job, but I'm gonna apply this same mask again. So I'm just going to paste it, okay? So it's not applying to the water, okay? So when we come back here, it's boosting the boats and the sky and not the water again. Okay. Let's see what landscape is doing. That's where we're getting this beautiful golden color. Okay. So it's applied the golden. This was part of the preset. Golden hour. Okay. And I might dial this one back just a little bit. But that looks pretty good. Let's see what it's done under color. So now it's lowered the color and the vibrance. 
I'm just going to check to see if it's done anything else. It's lowered the saturation of the oranges. And now it's sort of colorless, right? So I'm actually going to undo most of this, if not all of it. The sky has gone a little bit purple, right? So I might just go back. There we go. And shift the purple color, okay? So we can shift it more red. I think my image is not caught up to me yet. Let's just wait and see if it catches up. It's pretty purple now. It feels purple. Not sure why it's gone purple on me. Let's go back here. So that was our landscape one. Uh, so it's this one that's making it purple. So I'm going to dial that back a little bit. And I might even just remove this one. Or I can shift the colors. Right? So you can shift the colors different ways here. Or darken. If I want more blues, darken. Actually, that does a nice job on this boat here. To dialing that down a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to play with some other tools. Ah, that's a nice one. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite tools. Okay, you know, see what it's doing is it's increased the warmth of the warm colors. Okay, so it's it's punching up the sky and it's actually made the cool colors more purple. So I might go the opposite way with this one and make it more blue. Okay. Let's see what that's doing now. It really makes that sky stand out. Nice. Details, just adding a little bit of, of punch again to the medium and the, and the large details. So that works fine. That was part of the preset. Okay, super contrast. It's adding contrast and brightness to the shadows here. And I'm not sure that I want that. I think it's actually done too much. So, Rob, if you could please share another article on shadows and talking about dramatic images where shadows are actually your friend. You want to have shadows in your images, okay? So I'm going to actually remove this tool or at least reset it, okay, because I can actually affect the sky with the highlight slider, okay? So if I want to bring more contrast and color to the sky or mid-tone contrast, See how that's affecting it? Look at how much more dramatic it is with some darkness as opposed to brightening, over brightening the shadows. Okay. So I actually think that's far more dramatic with some darkness. Okay. Oh, the dramatic slider looks like that's not doing anything. So I'm just going to delete that one. Doesn't look like that one's doing anything either. Not sure why those are in the preset if they're not doing anything. Now it's also applied a lot under the mood tool. So it's adding more tone, definitely affecting the water nicely. See that? So I like that idea. Let's see what happens if we go all the way with it. So that's actually a nice LUT. And then finally, it's just applied a little bit of soft focus. Aha. Uh -huh. You know what? I think I understand why these were set at zero because it allows you to go through here and decide if you want to apply them or not. Okay. So this one I'm actually going to remove and I'm going to use my favorite one instead, which is mystical. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. I find mystical works nicer on landscapes. So I'm going to add mystical and something like that. Now we can also warm it up here if we want or cool it down. Okay. So we can make it even warmer this way. But really dramatic, really cool sky. Okay, so look at the full before and after. So we took something that was sort of lacking color, almost grayscale, and brought the color back. So there is color there. And this is the power of two things, the power of raw files and the power of Luminar, right? And if I hadn't have chosen that preset, I might not have gotten the idea or the possibility that I could see this one with the orange sunset, okay? Could go a completely different way with this one and go all blue as well, okay? So the choice is yours, but it's a really cool image. 
The only thing that I might do to finalize it is to add a little edge vignette, which I do on almost everything, just to darken the corners a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring my feather down and make this smaller. I want to darken this part of the sky. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it larger and then put the vignette sort of off center. Okay, so I want to keep this part a little brighter. And we're just darkening this top part like so. So when I click apply, it's going to save it and bring it back to Lightroom. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hey, I'm going to let everybody know, but we're getting close to 15,000 subscribers on the channel. Um, and I'd love to hit that before, before New Year's. So uh, send your friends. Get everybody to subscribe to the channel because we only need about 500 more people to hit 5,000. Okay, so see if if you aren't already subscribed, if you can be number 15,000. Thanks, Stephanie. Nice to see you as well. She says, nice transformation. And we're back in Lightroom. Don't know if you heard my computer bing or not, right? But have a look at that. Okay, so now you'll notice that it's come back as a TIFF, right? And we've still got the original image. So let me just sort these by file name. Actually, I had them sorted by color, I think. There we go. So I had the Luminar ones first. So there's the original, right? So the raw file has not been edited, even though we opened the raw file when it comes back into Lightroom. It's now a TIFF okay? to look at the difference there. Very cool. I think it's probably crooked as well. And I didn't straighten it in Luminar. So let's, I said I was going to do that. Let's just do that here. Didn't do anything. I feel like it should be, I want to get straightened. So the boat mask could be misleading because it might not be straight. Because look, if I try and straighten it by this one, okay, the other ones are crooked. So I'm trying to see, okay, what do the buildings look like? And ever so slightly, maybe this way. It's really hard to tell. And I can't tell if this here um, is leaning or like a ramp because I want to straighten that, right? If this is a walkway that's actually flat, then that is now straight and the boat's crooked. So you kind of have to decide, right? What makes, what looks better, what feels better. I, mean, I think it looks okay the way it is. Deb says, really like the warmth in the sky. I agree, yes, beautiful shot indeed. So I've got some great water shots today. And as Rob says, the best thing that you can do to support us is to share these videos um, and the articles from the website on your social media. Uh, post something, you know, from you, like he says, with a personal note. If you're in camera clubs or groups that are interested in photography, please feel free to share. Share our videos. Use the share button on YouTube. Share our articles as well. Um, help us to get subscribers and also help the people that want to learn photography to find us. So it's a win-win situation. All right. Let's see how many more I can do today. Let's see if I can get a couple more done. We're going to have more water shots left, but that's okay. Okay. Let me just mark the ones that I've done. I got a system. I got a system here. Uh, okay. So we've got another raise here. So let's do one of Raymond's photos. I'm just trying to see who else is with us. Karen's here as well. So let's do that. All right, so now we've got something totally different. We've got a warm sunset, right? So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, this is a DNG. Uh, let me see if I can see what camera was used. A Canon, okay? So are you converting your files to DNG to before you edit, um, Raymond, or did you convert it when you sent it to me, like it, as an export? And I used to do a DNG conversion, and I don't anymore. I find that the um, Software is pretty good at recognizing camera profiles. Speaking of which, I'm just looking through them here. 
Notice the portrait and landscape increase the red a lot, and I'm not sure I want to go that red. Okay, so I might go with neutral in this case. We can also go and look and see what is in some of these ones that come with Lightroom. We've got modern, and okay, look at how warm uh, that is. Okay. Some of them increase contrast. I actually kind of like that one. It's more almost monochromatic. Okay. Some of these remove color. That one's kind of nice, more warm. So if you choose the right profile, you have less editing to do. I kind of like this one. It just feels softer for some reason. Like the ones that are more um, saturated feels kind of in your face, right? So I'm going to go with the one that's a little bit softer. Okay, so you converted it before you sent it. Uh, because Lightroom brings them in a DNG. So if you want, so if you've exported it as DNG, that's totally fine. Um, the other thing you could do though, is you don't have to necessarily even go through that step. If you have a raw file in Lightroom, right, and you're, you want to send it to me, let me just show you, for example, okay, here's Zay's. All you have to do is right click it and choose show in Finder if you're on Mac and show in Windows Explorer if you're on Windows. And it will show you where that file lives on your hard drive. There's the CR3 file. Just grab that and give me that. So you don't even have to export it. Just save you a step. Okay? You can, but you don't have to. Okay? All right, where was I? Let's get back to the sunset. Okay, so we chose the camera profile. Now I'm just going to check and see here. We've got whites clipping. So the sun is clipping. Try, you don't have to try and eliminate clipping on the sun, okay? Because now it it should clip, actually. It's the sun, right? So I'm not worried about, about that, okay? So I've got clipping on the sun. I might even bring it a little bit brighter. Okay? And let's check the blacks. Now on the black side, when you have an image like this, don't worry about keeping the foreground detail, okay? This is going to be a silhouette kind of situation, a silhouette kind of image, okay? If you want to have detail in both the land and the sky at the same time, that's when you do the bracketing, okay? I'm going to straighten it. Oh, looks like I did already. Let me reset that, okay? So possibly some of your edits came forward when you did DNG. So if you straightened it already, that's where it came from. Okay, so I'm just going to hit auto. Okay. The other way that you can use this tool, okay, if auto doesn't work, in which case, in this case it did, you can use this little ruler. So you click on the ruler and it separates off like this. And then you just have to place this little crosshairs thing. I don't know if you can see it or not. You see, it looks like a little, here, I'll put it in the sky. See how it looks like a little um, X or a T? Put that over the horizon, okay, click and then drag so it covers the whole horizon. And I could go all the way off the image because the longer I make this line, the more accurate it's going to be. Then when I let go, it straightens it, okay, based on that line that I drew. Okay, now I'm going to try and get rid of some of this stuff at the top here. So I'm going to crop more over, I'm going to crop about there. So I'm putting the sun in that sort of power position on the thirds. And now how are we for visual mass here? How much of the water is there? Okay. What is the subject? Okay. That's what I mean by visual mass. When you have a large something, your eye is going to go there because it's the biggest thing or takes the most attention. And things that are smaller can grab attention as well if they are bright colors or intense colors or bright, some bright objects, right? So here, the water is the subject of the image because you've got so much of it, okay? If you don't want the water to take so much attention, then we need to crop some of it off, okay? You could go somewhere in here. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to come down on the top as well because I don't like this bush sort of just in the corner. So now I've got the horizon back to almost sort of the third. We still have two thirds water, but less of everything. Okay. So we've simplified this image down to its elements. 
And the one thing that bugs me over here is this stick. So I'm going to leave this tree, but this stick here bugs me. So I'm going to use the content aware brush, make it smaller. And I'm going to try it in two sections. So I'm just going to paint over the first part and see if it gets rid of it. Okay. So notice how that, when I move my mouse over here, see it hides the outline. Okay. And that's because I have that auto thing turned on that I showed you before. Look at that. I'm going to do one more click here just to see if I can get rid of that little stump. Perfect. Okay. Even this over here bugs me. Like these just things on the edge sticking out bug me. Okay. This one didn't quite get all of it. So let's see if I can do a better job. trying the different tools. Okay, I'm looking at this little spot over here. Okay, so that's now cleaned it up nicely. Okay. If we add some dehaze, look what happens. Okay, so you always get sort of that haze on the horizon. Okay, so we can add some dehaze to add some contrast or clarity or a combination of both. Okay. And do we need any noise reduction? Yeah, it's a little bit noisy. Okay. So in this case, Lightroom does not do the best job of noise. Okay. So we could try Lightroom, but I'm going to do a comparison and I've done, I've actually done some comparisons recently between Topaz and Luminar for denoise and Topaz actually, Luminar actually is competing fairly well. Okay. I'm going to increase this slider, the masking slider, because when you increase the sharpness of your image, see how it increases the grain? It's actually sharpening the grain. But when you drag this masking slider up, okay, what it's doing, if you hold down the Alt key, okay, so it's applying only on the outline part of the image. Okay? So I'm going to sharpen, but not so much, just the outlines, okay? like so. So I'm going to actually keep this lower. So let's take this into Topaz. And I don't want to do any noise reduction here. Completely zero. Okay. Because you want the other program to do it. Well, the thing is, if Lightroom applies some and it puts the color one at 25 by default, so I'm actually going to remove that to zero. Right. Let the other program do its job. So I'm going to go to Topaz Denoise. And you can see that I was there recently because I was removing some noise in the Aurora images that I just made for the new sky pack. Okay. <laughs> when I say, just give me that. Uh, when did I say that? <laughs> yes. Drop it into submit. I believe if I said I wanted an image, Sheila, then yes, drop it into submit. Rob is topping up his coffee. Um, you did send me a raw file, Raymond. So a DNG is a raw file. Uh, but if you shot, um, like Canon, it would be a CR2 or CR3 file based on, on the Canon that you're using. So at some point you converted it to DNG. So if you exported from Lightroom and chose DNG, that's still a raw file, but it's, it's not the original. It's just been exported through Lightroom. So it may carry, um, some of your edits. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay. So immediately it shows the last edits that I did in here. Okay. So I was removing some noise on some high ISO images that I shot to make my, my Aurora sky pack. So I want to look at the noise in the area that matters the most. And typically like Topaz takes a lot of time to apply things. So people are complaining that the no noise of the sharpen in Luminar takes a long time, but if you've ever used Topaz, it takes a little forever, right? So you can see the before and after here, right? There's the before and the after looks much smoother. Let me turn off Ray's comment here. So I could just apply it as is, right? I find that if you recover more detail, the higher you bring this slider, it actually brings the noise back. Okay. So see how some of the noise is coming back now. So I usually leave that a bit lower, right? Do we have any color noise? I might bring that up to one or two as well. 
just make sure that's cleaned up. And if I want to go low light or all clear, I could try some of the other settings, but I'm pretty happy with what that's doing right now. It looks nice and, and clean, right? I'm just looking at the whole image. Let's just look over there. See, even just moving it around, it takes a minute to redraw the preview. So I'm going to apply that and see how long it takes. I actually did some batch processing through Topaz on my um, Aurora Skies and each one took about a minute and a half. So I was processing 10 at a time and it took 15 minutes to process them. So don't get too upset about Luminar taking a while because Topaz does as well. What it's doing is a heavy, heavy um, process, right? Okay, Rob says we urgently, urgently need some night photos to work on. We have three um, night photos. So I'd love to see some more night photos uh, for next week. That would be great. And then people and portraits the following week. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit of a portrait theme this month because we're actually going to be relaunching our portrait course in two parts. So you can actually buy it um, as a single part now. Okay, so now this is the edited one. If I look at it side by side, I'm just going to get these here. If I look at it side by side with the original, right, this is this is compare view. So I hit C on my keyboard. Now I can zoom in and you can see that the original is quite grainy or noisy compared to the new one done in Topaz. But just for fun, let's take this one into Luminar and do the same thing. Where are we? There it is. So let's go to Luminar Neo and let's try the new Noiseless. Okay, now the Noiseless is an extension, okay? And some of the extensions you can't get to when you're using it as a plugin, the HDR one and the focus stacking one, because they're in the catalog view, which we don't have when we open this from Lightroom to Luminar as a plugin, right? If you want to use those, you have to open Luminar directly. And you'll see that they're here under extensions, noiseless and super sharp. Okay? So I'm going to do noiseless. Now it's recommending low, but I'm going to try medium, right? We could try both. Now, see, it's the same thing as Topaz. It's analyzing the image, but it was actually quicker, right? So let's take a look. That looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little, a little bit further. My cats are going crazy now. That looks actually pretty good. But see how it's maintained the detail in the water? Like, we're not losing any detail, but we're losing the noise. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, it's Got that up high. Again, if I increase the details, it's probably going to bring back more noise. Okay, so I want to make sure that I don't take this up too high. Same with sharpness. Okay. Let's try high. Let's see how, how far we can go with this one. I don't see a lot of difference there. I'm just going to go with middle. Okay. And let's apply it. Now, the cool thing about this is you can actually apply it twice and you can go in and try denoise as well. Okay, so the noise list is the plugin, but look at denoise here. It's actually doing a really nice job. And I do see that there's some color noise and then we're losing a bit of detail here. But if I increase this and then we go to details, now keep in mind, I'm zoomed into 200% here, okay? If I go medium details, a little bit of sharpening, okay. I'm going to keep the masking up high, a right. little bit of more detail. See what that's doing? Bringing out the water and just a tiny bit of small details. Right. That's doing a nice job on the water. Okay. So now there's the before and after. Let's take this back to Lightroom and then we're going to compare. Okay. Um, I've got an article where I did Topaz Denoise review, Rob. 
So if you want to, you can link to that one. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here and now we're gonna compare. Sorry, I've got to sneeze. Ooh. So the one on the left is Topaz. That was the first edit. Okay, this is edit. And then edit two, the second one that we did is Luminar. So I just put the names up there so you know I'm not making this up. So I'm gonna zoom in. Huh. Okay, so look at which one is cleaner. The Luminar one is definitely cleaner, but there's far more detail in here in the Topaz one. When we get further into the water, they look pretty similar, right? A little more detail in the Topaz one. Okay, so I took the denoise further with Luminar to get rid of more of the noise, okay? but I was able to apply it um, more tools than, than just the one. Okay. In this case, I would probably go with the Luminar one because I don't need the details at the horizon so much and it's still sharp enough, but I think they both did a good job here. Okay. So the Luminar one has less noise, but the Topaz one has a bit more detail retained. Okay. So there's our sunset. All right, let's see who else is here. We have not done one. Got a couple of Karens, so let's see which one we want to work on. Let's see, we've got the beach or the mountain. I think I could pull more detail out of here and do something with this, right? I'm not sure how much is there. This is a little bit flat lighting, but let's let's just see what we can pull out, okay? They're also both JPEGs. So question for you, Karen, are you shooting raw files, okay? The amount of detail in a JPEG is going to be limited, so I'll try and pull some detail out of here. But because this one is fairly dark, we may not be able to pull some detail out. Okay, so see how the histogram is all kind of squished up to the side here? Um, it's missing detail over here. Okay? And I'm not going to have a camera profile. Okay? So even if I go in here, there's no camera profiles because it's a JPEG. Okay? So I'm going to do shift double click on the white slider. Okay. Now look at the histogram. See what magic that does. Then I'm going to bring the highlights down, which brings the sky back, bring the shadows up. Now see, even if I bring the shadows all the way up, oh, there is detail there. Look at that. There is detail there. Okay. I'm going to bring the shadows up. Exposure maybe up a little bit as well. And we'll bring the sky back down. Okay. Let's check the blacks. Make sure I have a little bit of black. I'm not going to add clarity here because a JPEG is sharpened in camera and I don't want to add sharpening. Okay. But I definitely want to darken the sky. So we're going to do select sky. And I usually do darken as opposed to highlight down. Because when I bring the highlights down, okay, it just kind of flattens the sky out. Okay? If I want to keep those nice clouds to be white, I'm just going to darken. And if anything, I'm going to do dehaze. Look at what it does on the sky. See that? That's dehaze or clarity. Dehaze actually did a better job there. So I'm going to bring dehaze up a little bit and maybe saturation down. Keep the colors natural looking. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now if I want more detail in these dark areas here, we could do a mask on that as well. So I'm just going to call this sky. And if you want to get rid of this here, this is um, a light flare. So if the sun was hitting your lens, this is a, a reflection of that. So it's kind of picking up the light in your lens. Sometimes you can leave them. I don't mind them all the time. Depends if you, you know, want that effect. But not having the sun in the picture, it kind of doesn't make sense here. So I am going to just erase it. So I'm going to use content aware brush. See how it didn't do a perfect job? Okay, so if I do refresh, let's see if it gets better. That looks better. Let's try the clone and heal tool instead. Okay, so when we do the healing, you have a choice of placing it. So I can try and line up these stripy clouds a little better. I think that works better. 
All right, let's do that. And I don't mind the bird. There's also a spot up here, okay? That is a dust spot on your lens or on your sensor, okay? So if you have spots like this that are dark, you want to clean your lens and your sensor because you got one or the other. Usually if it's a small, um, sharp point, it's, a, it's something dirty on your sensor. Um, things like this, where they're kind of blobs, potentially it's on your lens, right? And because, yeah, I'm gonna guess it's lens. Because it's shot at f14, can you see the exposure here? When you shoot at a really small aperture like that, um, any imperfections that you have on your sensor or your lens are gonna show up more, okay? All right, so that's looking good, right? This thing here in the bottom corner bothers me, this buoy here, and this sort of thing here. So we're gonna do some cropping. We're gonna take it, let's just see if it's straight. Okay, so now Lightroom could get fooled here because it could think that this is the horizon. So I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or not. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom and get rid of that buoy on the right. Now, I don't mind this one on the left because it kind of leads you into the image and across the image, okay? Or we could get rid of most of the buoys and just come right up here to the reflection, okay? So then it becomes more about the landscape and the sky. The thing that, that is neat here is that there's sort of this mirroring going on um, in the image of triangles, okay? So we've got triangle shape here, triangle shape upside down here, mountain and then even the cloud has a triangle shape okay so there's kind of this neat mirroring of shapes in the image that i like in terms of visual mass you've got lots of dark stuff on this side so dark things feel heavy so it might be feeling like it's leaning that way but then you've got this over here to balance it okay without this it would feel unbalanced let me show you doesn't that feel unbalanced can you feel it sort of doing this Okay. No, uh, Rob says I have eagle eyes. <laughs> it freaks him out a little bit. <laughs> Would this be a candidate for focus stacking? Um, you could, Raymond, but I don't think you really need to. Like, honestly, I was actually going to say she probably doesn't even need to shoot at F14, right? If I take a look at, again, go back to the information, the shooting information, right? This was taken with a 50 mil lens on a crop sensor camera, I'm guessing. Let's just see. Yeah, and this is the original camera JPEG. So Nikon D500. So yeah, crop sensor. So it's basically a long-ish lens, right? So 50 is kind of like a 75 on a full frame. So you really don't need a lot of depth of field because you only need that much depth of field when you're photographing something really close and really far away or if you're doing macro and you're up close to something because the depth of field gets really, really slow uh, or shallow. And where you might want to do focus stacking is, for example, um, if you're photographing a full moon and you want to get the moon sharp and then you want to get the foreground sharp, you would need two shots. You could actually put them together and do focus stacking and Luminar does that now. Okay, let me get back in here. So next I'm going to select the trees, okay? So what is the best way for me to select the trees? So think about what, a, what about them is different than the rest of the image? Well, they're the darkest, so I could use luminance range. I could try green, but then I'm going to get all these bits in the mountains, okay? But if I want to get the reflection as well, I could do darks. I could also do object, okay? So let's try, I'm gonna do luminance range. So luminance range is brightness range. And I'm just going to select this dark area and it pretty much gives me exactly what I'm looking for, okay? I'm gonna expand it a little bit. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna call it trees. And I'm just going to punch the exposure a little bit and the shadows. 
So I'm going to actually lower the contrast. I'm trying to just get a little bit of detail in there. See how it's picked up the detail in this uh, rock wall over here where the people are sitting? Right? But it's done some weird things on some of the colors. You know, see how it's it's doing weird stuff there? Okay? So I need to limit it a bit more. Okay? So I'm going to work with this here so it's not picking up the bright colors. See that? Oh, that's better. Let's expand that. Okay, so see how it's brightening everything, okay, but I don't want it to affect these bright colors as much. That's better. Okay, let's do before and after. Notice how when I was adjusting the white balance previously, we had all the options for daylight, shade, cloud, and so on. Okay? When you have a JPEG only, you just have auto and custom. Okay? So I'm going to try auto, see if it shifts the color. Wow, way warmer. Okay? So that's definitely warmer than I would have gone. I'm going to increase the warmness a little bit, but not too much, maybe three. And I find it's a little bit magenta, so I'm going to go a little bit this way. Often when you're adjusting color, you need to go one way with yellow and the other way with the green and magenta slider, okay? Because usually something is, is, if it's cool, it's got blue and magenta. If it's warm, it's got yellow and green, okay? So think of that. Um, now this buoy kind of bothers me, so I might do some work to clone this one out and leave the other two. But if I'm going to do that, I got to get rid of the evidence in the middle as well. Okay, so we got to get rid of that one and these spots. I'm using the content aware fill and see how it's doing a really good job. Previously, before they introduced this tool, um, it's a new element of the um, spot removal tool. Previous to this, you'd have to go into Photoshop to get content aware. Um, so it's actually really great technology to have here in Lightroom. Okay, so that's actually not bad. I'm kind of missing that spot here. So let's try heal instead. Oh, it's picking. Ah, I'm not seeing the whole image. That's the problem. Let's go over here. I missed it. That's why I'm missing part of the image. Let's do that again. Let's do that part. And then this part. So see how I'm doing it little by little, right? Now I got to get the whole thing. And that was the problem. I didn't get the whole thing. Make sure I color it all in. That's better. And then I'm just going to do the string. See how to get them overlap. I start further away and just go into it. Right, so I get that last bit with this one. There we go. And it looks like I missed a bit over here. We'll just do that. And one more there. That looks pretty good. Right? See how that simplifies that corner and takes your eye, because it was taking my eye over here. Okay? So here's a before and after. Okay? Now notice that I darkened the sky, but the water is still really bright. Okay? So I could go back in here and choose the sky mask and say, well, I want to add to this. So I could add, let's do luminous range because I want to add this whole bright area here of the water. Okay. Obviously that's not working so great. I need to expand it a little bit so it blends better. See how that's a mess? <laughs> okay. Can you see that? I'm making a big mess now. I just want to keep it over here towards the whites and I might have to do a separate one because I think that the sky adjustment is too much for this one. So I'm going to rethink that and do a new one and I'm just going to do a linear gradient up from the bottom and let's just bring the highlights down. That's way better. See that? That's way better. 
like so. Okay, so there's our before and after. <laughs> Rob has to feed the cats because they poke him when it's food time for food. So he is getting poked. I think we're just about ready to wrap up for today. Uh, I'm not sure how many more I can do. Uh, we're at an hour and a half. Well, let me just see if I can copy and paste from this one. Let's go back here. Let me just copy. And I'm going to copy. Uh, I forgot to label that one. So that was the bottom one. I'm just going to do sky in this one. And I'm not going to do cropping or healing, okay? Because I'm doing a completely different image. I'm going to do this other one and see if I can paste it in here. Okay, so I'm just going to do paste. Okay, obviously, I've gone way too bright with this one. And the sky is definitely not the same sky. So we need to reselect it. Ah, it's picking those mountains in the background there. Okay, see how that's doing? So I might just add object and just pick this whole area right here. Because it's picking the amount. There we go. I missed part of it. Let's just add brush again. And let me get this part here. Look at what that's doing. Nice job. So I'm darkening that part over there. Okay, so that did a good job on the sky. Maybe we'll give it a little more blue. So really quickly, just a quick copy and paste and a little adjustment. Yeah, I'm still not crazy about how that's working. Let's do, oops, let's do the arrow or the ruler instead. Looks pretty straight. Okay, now what do we think about visual mass here? Okay, there's a lot of beach, okay? There's a lot of beach. Um, and this whole bottom third of the image, there's really nothing there to hold your attention, okay? So I'm going to get rid of almost all of it. Okay. Is there any interest in the sky? Sort of, right? But the neat part is up here. So for me, it's mirroring... What I see is these diagonal lines here in the sand and up here. So let me see if I can emphasize that. I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. I'd really love to bring this down here, but then I lose that effect. Right? I'd love to move the sky down. Well, we could even do a sky replacement on this one. Okay. And... <laughs> Actually, do you want to see the new skies? I'll show you the new skies. Okay. So your interest is really in this middle section here. Okay. So when you're photographing, just get really clear on, okay, what is it that I'm photographing? And you might need to get physically closer or zoom in closer. Okay. So quick preview. Uh, we talked about... Let's see, we talked about the images that I shot a couple of weeks ago. Do you guys want to see those? Let me find them. Uh, okay. I got to turn my screen off for a second because I don't want to, I don't want to give it away. It's a secret. Okay, let me just find the images. And I'm going to show you what I got. Okay. I got a special model for you guys because I had a tester. Where is he? You might recognize him. Well, you guys might not recognize him because you've never actually seen Rob. Nobody sees Rob. Nobody gets to see him. He's hiding all the time. So if you guys want a little sneak peek, some of you know what Rob looks like. And we did some goofy pictures of myself as well. So let's just do those. Okay, I got my screen ready. You guys ready to see these goofy pictures? Here 
There we go. This one. There's the reveal. Okay. Matt, what's that? That's what Rob looks like. And then I was doing some goofy pictures of me. <laughs> and this is what we did. So we had some really neat models come in. Oops. Um, these girls are Maori, which is indigenous to New Zealand, indigenous people of New Zealand. And this is their traditional regalia that they that they wear. And these two girls are, are actually models. They're sisters, and they're absolutely stunning. Okay. I'm going to try and say their names well. Sydney is easy. <laughs> She's the one that's seated. And I was practicing saying the other girl's name, and she said that I did a really good job. So I'm going to try and get it right. It's Hanari. Okay, so it's like an R, but like rolling the tongue. Okay. How beautiful are these girls? Okay. And we did, again, we did this in a community hall. And this is light painting. So I'm going to be doing an article on how to do this, right? So the light on them is flash. And then it's a long exposure to do the light painting in behind them. Okay. Yes, exactly, Trish. Um, similar spelling to that. Yes, Hanadi. Now this girl is Crystal Lightning. So she is a local actress and she's in a lot of stuff. So if you guys have um, Prime, if you have Amazon Prime TV channels, go look up the show Three Pines. I'm going to find it for you because her and her mom, um, Georgina Lightning, are both in this show. And Georgina is the one that did the movie that I photographed the set of recently. Okay, so they are both extremely talented people. Let me pop this in the chat here. And Crystal and I had wanted to do a photo shoot for a while. I had an inspiration to do something really dramatic, black and white. And these are a couple of the ones I did, right? But this is the one that I was inspired to make, right? So I wanted super high contrast, just black and just white. And she's just got like amazing, you know, cheekbones and structure. She's absolutely gorgeous. And then, well, we did this first, actually. We did this first, very dark. And then we made this one. And would you believe that those are on the same background? Okay. Same background. So I did this and I went to write an article about this as well. So you know how to change some lighting and stuff. This is a gray muslin background, right? And I did the same background. That's what the background looks like, right? We did this for her designer that made the dress for her. Okay. And another light painting, right? And another light painting. That's all the same background. Okay. This one is actually a combination of four different images three different light painted images, actually two different light, three different light painted images, um, one for her and then a separate one actually for her face because she moved during the long exposure and we had two of her. So I actually took her face from a different image. Okay. So yeah, that's what we did. Oh, I don't have the one of Elisa. There should be another one. Um, where's the one of Elisa? Guess I didn't name it as four stars. Let me find it. I did another one. There it is. Okay. So this is also the same background, high contrast, black and white. Okay. So who was the one that was liking the black and white? Was that was that you, Karen? Um, so you would really like these then, right? So super contrast. I let everything go real bright or real dark. And we just had a lot of fun with this um, in our pseudo studio, right? So just to show you this, that you don't need to have um, a studio studio. Like I literally rented my local community hall and set up lights in a background, right? You could do this with speed lights, but we were using strobes. Now I'm going to do another reveal here if I can find it. Uh, where are my auroras? Because I just did a collection of them. Um, so we've got, here we go. Okay. So this is the new set of auroras. 
skies that we just made or I just made. And this is the ones I was running through the noise reduction. Okay, So this is now available as a sky replacement pack. So if you want to add an Aurora into some of your images, um, these are all available. And I've also got some night skies included in the pack. So ones like that, right? So we've got clouds and stars and a little bit of aurora and stars and clouds. I just love that kind of look. Starry sky and also some stormy skies, even light trails and some stormy skies. This was over Alberta over the summer. I got a great storm cell. That's my favorite one. I love this storm cell, right? So uh, the aurora was earlier this summer, yes. So let me get back here to find my thing here to uh, end up. Where did we go? I've got so many images here in, in Lightroom, you guys. If you want to know how many images I have, 192,000. Okay, so if you're worried about your catalog having too many photos, don't. Because <laughs> I probably have more. All right. So just to remind you, um, we also have a Luminar Neo keyboard shortcut. Rob, if you want to share a link for that as well. And our courses for Lightroom and for Luminar Neo. Um, we might be having a Christmas sale. Hold on to your hats for that. We might be having a sale. Uh, we'll announce that soon-ish. But if you want to submit photos for next week, please, we want night photos, night photos, night photos, night photos, and some portraits for the following week. So I need to refresh my coffee and uh, take a little break. <laughs> Raymond says the storm cell looks like a puppy or a dragon. <laughs> Somebody says, Stephanie says a dragon. Well, you guys can find out it out. Um, and figure out whether it's a dragon or a puppy. But I've used it on a few images already and it looks great. Okay, so Rob is busy putting links into the chat. Well, I am just yakking away. So I thank you all for your patience last week again. We had literally no internet. Um, we checked our internet provider and they were down for, yeah, about seven hours. There was absolutely no internet in the whole neighborhood. So there was nothing that we could have done about that. So we went shopping. We went to a Christmas market with uh, Indigenous vendors and I bought some wonderful things and gifts for Christmas. So if you're still shopping, um, as I said, we might be having a Christmas sale. If you're listening right now, that's a hint for you. Uh, we might be having a holiday sale. And if you're looking for gifts for uh, friends in your circle that enjoy photography, consider buying them something from our website. As always, have a great week. And until next week, keep photographing and keep practicing your photo editing. I look forward to seeing your night photos for next week. Take care.